lovely to, to chat to you. Head of Sports Science, tell me, how does that compare to playing? Oh, everything, <laughs> absolutely everything. Uh, well, to start with, I mean, obviously I started playing, you know, so it's been, I've, had, I've been really grateful. I've been really fortunate to be able to leave off my passion, who was football. And then when did that come about? I think it's, uh, obviously, unfortunately, I picked up a few injuries, some of them really bad one. Uh, work with good physios, work with good fitness coach. Uh, ended up working also in France in, uh, in one of the massive rehab centers they have. And then it's, I looked at something maybe I could do at some stage when I can't run around anymore. Uh, um, and so I think it's in 2010, I contacted the PFA to do the course, the sports science degree course. And it was hard work. <laughs> <laughs> it was very testing. And at the time, I didn't know where that would take me. Um, and I just had to learn pretty much everything, really. You know, so I had, I had a few ideas and the stuff you do as a player, then you try and test you. I was always happy to try stuff, you know. And so, um, and so I done the bachelor in sports science. Uh, really enjoyed it in the end, you know. Um, but then, obviously, just limited with the knowledge. Sometimes it feels like I didn't know enough. So I ended up doing a master in strength and conditioning to complement a little bit, um, and then look at where I was weak and where I needed to develop in terms of the fitness coaching world, basically. And so. And so, as it compared to football, well, it's just totally different. Um, I think the stuff, I guess, you will still have is the connection with the lads, um, the changing room things, you know, the fact that you get up at the morning and you're going to work with young players and, and the, the dynamic, they want to improve, you know, and so, um, and so that's something that is nice to have instead of uh, actual office jobs where you don't get that. Um, and it's really that connection to player like today, the last couple of days we've made a signing for January, young lad who come from non-league and then it's, it's a learning curve for him but also for me, I learn from him as much as he does and it's an exchange and so, um, and, and, and that's what I like in the role is, um, is uh, working in good collaboration with, with, with all the staff members. And, um, and coaches and also helping players get their best. Yeah. I sp I've spoken to some players who, when they finished playing, wanted nothing more to do with football, wanted to do something completely different. For you, did you always want to stay in football? Yeah, but not necessarily uh, in the in the day-to-day -day football things. I think it's a, it's a love-head stuff, football, and, and uh, we love to hate it, but it's, it's addictive. Uh, it can consume you. It's a lot of sacrifices as well for families and kids, you know, where, you know, it's, it's obviously weekend hours, but it's, it's, you get the reward for it. So it's not just, I'm not complaining. I loved it, you know. Um, I think I saw myself maybe a little bit on the side of things and that's where the sports science fits in a little bit because it's aspects of performance that can impact, obviously, what's happening on a Saturday massively but not just, you know. Um, it's obviously things re regarding strength and conditioning, we, which, which are becoming a massive part of, of, uh, of players' development now. And so, um, and then like I mentioned also, and it's connecting with players, it's connecting with people, you know, and understanding what they like, what they're good at, what their weakest link, and train and target area for improvement. So sports science, it would be an umbrella term for lots of different elements. Would that be fair? Yeah, that, that, that's correct. So the course itself is based around physiology, biomechanics and sport psychology. And then on top of it, you've got a layer of nutrition and other specific field. So um, what's been nice about the course and obviously starting has been that um, it is quite generic. And when I started to work, just before I finished to graduate at Fleetwood, um, it, it, it was nice because at the level we were, League 2, when I started working, um, you would be exposed to quite a wide array of skills, basically, from 
potentially designing session, delivering session, the data analysis of what you gather from the session, and then the retweak and then so on. You will speak to obviously coaches, medical staff, CEOs, uh, bit by bit you start to recruit staff, manage staff. And so um, it is quite a wide umbrella. And obviously inside that, different people have got different specialities. But at all of all, uh, it is nice to be exposed to the full thing and be able to have an understanding for the full coaching process, basically, yeah. Do you think when you started out as a young player, you would have benefited from having, and you, I don't know, you may well have had, mm -hmm. but would you have benefited from having someone who was head of sports science mm -hmm. at the football team? Yeah, I mean, they've called it different name at the time. I think at the, when I started, it was just fitness coach, and that changed really, really quickly over the last 10 years, more or less, you know. But um, I work with fitness coach. I think there's more science or more research and a bit more knowledge. The knowledge is a bit wider spread those days, so it's more accessible. Uh, for anyone today, you go on ResearchGate and, and and LinkedIn or here and there, and you can find quite relevant information with regards to how training can can help can help you develop. And so, one of the big regrets I had me personally is um, I wasn't really a gifted player. Unfortunately, I had to learn the hard way, and along the way, I picked up a lot of injuries. My knees were my weakest point, and when I look back at what I used to do, I felt that if I had um, had the opportunity to work with a fitness coach on my squatting, on my gym work, that could have helped me massively in my career, especially when I feel, when I look at the, just the pain I had from, from a 17 year old up to, on top until I got surgery at 22, uh, just five years of tendinitis, knee pain, and then that affects your performance. You start to question, there's a psychological aspects of it where you start to question whether you make it or not, you know, what am I gonna do if I don't make it? And so, um, so I think today, the, like I said, the knowledge is widespread, it's more available, and it, it doesn't mean that mistakes don't happen and injury don't happen, but we're trying and reduce the risk in some ways, and also um, look at the long-term athlete development approach and have a bit more of a holistic approach to player development. Do you, how, do, how do you see the role developing as well? Presumably it's always, you're always learning new things, I guess. Yeah, so y a, a big part, which is, that's really the tricky part, is uh, to keep your knowledge up to date when you do, do spend a lot of times running around after players and then setting stuff up and so, um, but it, it, it's not a low point, it's great. It means that you constantly have to look at what other clubs do, what other teams are doing, but also what the latest research suggests and how would you apply that in your context there in, in a League One club. Um, so that, that, that's a challenge, but um, it, it's something that's nice to have. And it's part also of having staff and little overlaps when you can have a little bit of cover, you can, uh, find satisfaction through your job by also knowing that you're not stagnating, you're developing. And for me personally, I mean, when I started 2012, 13, 13, 14, we didn't use GPS. We just got onto the Polar heart rate monitoring system. Uh, and 2015, we brought Catapult, who brought obviously the GPS monitoring. And so you open a box and then you open that box, you, we're still digging with that. There's so much variable, 25,000 variable we can monitor of an athlete's performance. And so um, it, it's, it's, it's intense and now. Uh, and so, yeah, the, the role has moved more to being more of a, sometimes a, a laboratory rat sometimes, where there's elements of computing, Excel sheets and things that you need to be up to speed with and to help you. Um, but like I said, for me, I enjoy, and that's why I've done the strength and conditioning master, is I enjoy the contact with players. I enjoy talking to the groups, talking to players individually, trying to understand what they make tick and that. And so um, that, that's the coaching part that I kind of prefer in the role personally, yeah.